What's up guys, Omega here and welcome back to GT7 for another lap guide. This one at Suzuka in the Group 3 cars on the racing hard tires. This one is a little bit different than our normal Group 3 race with BOP. When you go into the race, you will see that the car settings, there's actually suspension partial allowed. So this means that you can go into the car settings and make some slight adjustments here to the damping ratio. Personally, I'm not very big on tuning. I don't know how it all works. So I have just left the McLaren as it is. The only thing I have touched is the brake bias, which we're running at plus two. I tried a couple of different cars for this combination so far and the McLaren easily being the best one to drive in terms of feeling and just pace for me. The first car I tried was the Supra and it's just absolutely horrendous on hard tires around here. I did try the Porsche and I actually did try some tuning that I got advised about, but I just wasn't able to get the pace out of the car. The best I was able to get out of the Porsche was a 2011 and I also tried the GTR, but this car for me i don't know what it is i just can't seem to extract any pace out of it so that's pretty much why we're going with the mclaren so starting off your lap you start around this point just before the final chicane so you want to try and make sure you get a good run onto the straight over the start finish line so i exit in second gear and with this car you do rev it out quite a lot you will see here that i'm just ahead of my ghost and that is mainly because i wasn't revving the car out on the lap that the ghost is on so definitely rev this car out a lot more than you think and coming into the first corner what i'm looking for it is the last board the 50 board and just before we're hitting that i kind of stab the brakes and then coast in towards the inside apex while shifting down the gears and back on the brakes to try and get the car to turn in i go all the way down to first gear just to help with the rotation a little bit and then back up to third gear for the exit and through this section i've kind of found that it's all about just maintaining speed and getting good angles through the corners so for this first corner of the s's i leave the car in third gear and then attack the curb on the inside and for the second one i'm shifting down to second gear to try and keep the car hugging this curb i go back up to third and on the power to try and push the car back over to the right hand side and also to maintain speed just giving the car a couple of little lifts off the throttle to try to get the nose to point in towards the apex and then once i've got it lined up nicely i'm fully back on the throttle and just before i hit the end of this next curb i'm on the brakes and back down to second gear again to try and stick the car to this curb all the way around back up to third gear and then using the throttle to push the car over to the right hand side and then try to swing the car in, giving it a few little lifts until you can feel that you're going to make the corner. I attack the curb on the inside quite aggressively here. And what you don't want to do is run too wide to the right because this grass will pull you straight off towards the right-hand side if you touch it. Revving the car right out still. I hold this in fourth gear. I haven't found the rev limiter in this car yet and I'm revving it quite a lot, which I've found is faster. And braking just before the 50 board on the left-hand side, which is the last board. Shifting down to third, something I've noticed about the McLaren is it doesn't like the curbs all that much so just trying to nick the curb on the inside and back on the power pretty much as soon as I hit it try not to run too wide onto the green stuff because this is another spot where it can just pull you off the track and just before the end of this curb you want to be on the brakes down to second gear and just as you're coming off the curb on the inside back on the power again trying not to run too wide now coming up to the hairpin you want to get a good entry into it to try to get the car as straight as possible by attacking the curb on the right braking just just as you hit the end of the curb on the right, hard on the brakes, all the way down to first gear, and about midway through the corner, trying to get back on the power, nice and easy, so that you maintain traction. This car being an MR car, it does seem to have quite good traction out of that corner, but if you do get on the throttle too early, obviously it is still going to spin, but very planted compared to the other cars that I drove. Trying to keep sort of a tighter line towards the right or the middle of the track, to getting the car over to the right-hand side for this sweeping left-hander, or double apex, known as spoon, and just before you hit this path on the right hand side you want to be on the brakes hard i go down to second gear and then give it a little burst on the throttle to try and push the car over to try and maintain speed coming back off the throttle and braking just a touch to try and keep the car towards this inside curb i shift back up to third gear and back on the power once i'm about midway around this corner trying not to run too wide once again out of there and then just flat out revving the absolute crap out of the car and then for this very fast left hander 130R. You just want to give it a slight lift on the throttle at the 50 board and then swing the car in, attack the apex on the inside and then back on the throttle. Get the car over to the left-hand side and just before the 100 board, you want to be hard on the brakes 
I go all the way down to first gear, attack quite a bit of the first apex of the chicane, back up to second gear, and a little bit of throttle to try and push the car over to the right and line up the exit onto the start finish line. Then I go back down to first gear to help the car rotate a little bit, back up to second and back on the power as early as I can without losing grip, and then try to stick very tight to the right hand side around this last right hander, as this does save you a little bit of time doing this. And that's good for two minutes, 0.989. So certainly not the fastest time in the world. The world record currently is held by the GTR with a 159.1, but hopefully it does help you a little bit if you don't know how to tune, don't want to tune, or just need a bit of guidance around the track. Now what I'll do is I'll play that back in full speed now so you can see how it looks in real time. And I will also play back the out of car view so you guys can see that if you are interested. And if you got any value out of today's video, let me know by dropping a like on it and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.